What's happening guys? Today I want to talk about scale weight fluctuations, why the weight fluctuates, what we can do to kind of minimize the problems of these fluctuations, and how we can possibly create a better relationship with the scale. All right, so I actually kind of briefly touched on this in my last reverse diet video, and that's kind of what gave me the idea to do this video. So you have to understand that the scale weight is going to fluctuate a lot, all right, up to several pounds every single day based on a plethora of things. And uh, we just can't get so caught up in any singular scale weight because there's so many reasons it can change. And on a day to day basis, almost all changes are going to be absolutely nothing to do with body fat. All right, so we have a tendency to look at any changes in scale weight as all body fat when, the, when the, the, the reality of the situation is in the short term, scale weight fluctuations are almost no fat at all. It's, it's, it's a lot of different things. There's things like water weight, sodium intake, hormones, sleep, stress, uh, training inflammation, how much food is still digesting in your system, how much fluids you just drank. Right? There's, there's so many things that can change the scale weight on a day-to-day -day basis that we have to understand that we cannot get caught up in, in small fluctuations in the short term because they're completely meaningless. All right? So if you, weighed, if you weighed a certain weight one day and the next day you were two pounds heavier, I promise you did not gain two pounds of fat overnight. All right? It doesn't work like that. That's not going to happen. So you have to kind of keep that in mind and not get so tied up in that actual scale weight. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to lose fat specifically, you know, you're probably, you're going to want to see that, that scale weight trend down over time. All right. I'm not saying that the scale weight means nothing, but you just have to understand it's just one tool in the tool belt. And there's, especially as someone gets leaner, there can be more, more changes in body weight that are going to make a little less sense. All right. So if you have a lot of weight to lose, you're going to see that weight trend down over time. All right. But if you're someone who's relatively lean, you may be, have a better body composition at a higher weight because you're adding more lean body mass. All right. So we've got to kind of keep that in mind. And when you're building muscle, muscle is not free. All right. It, it weighs, all right. It's going to be a part of your body and you have to keep that in mind. Now, what I want to talk about is how we can try to minimize the weight fluctuations and how to hopefully create a better relationship with scale. Now, as I talked about in that last video, what I typically do is I take a weekly average of daily weigh-ins to get a more accurate representation of the reality of your current situation with your body. And this can do a few things. So a lot of times people will hear daily weigh-in and they'll freak out and think, I can never do that. Uh, you know, I, I, the scale will just totally mess me up and I, I can't handle that. But what I have found is probably for over 90% of people, this actually helps create a better relationship with, with the scale, not worse. The, the thing you have to do is you have to understand that you have to disassociate any singular weighing, right? You can't look at the scale every single day and expect to see changes. It's just not going to happen. But what happens is you start to see the fluctuations. You see your weight jumping up and down and you can see how the weight fluctuates on a daily basis and how you shouldn't get so tied up on that, that single weigh-in. It can really help you understand, okay, like I can't get so caught up in this. And the other thing it can do is when you're looking at a weekly average, right? That weekly average of your weight you take that and that is your actual weight, all right? You don't, you don't care about all the daily weigh-ins or anything like that. It's just that actual average. And that's what you want to consider your actual weight by the end of the week. And then you do that the next week and you're going to get a better accurate representation of your current body weight. And this can be really beneficial and especially with taking into account how much the weight can fluctuate. I have seen this happen in several occasions. If you were to do, say, like a lot of people do a weekly weigh-in, right? You weigh in, say it's a Saturday. You weigh in one Saturday, the next Saturday you weigh in again. Well, the problem with that is what can happen is you could be in a situation where maybe one day you weighed in and you were abnormally light, or maybe you were super dehydrated and you weighed less than usual. And then the next Saturday you weigh in again and maybe you, you're super bloated and you ate a, lunch, a bunch of food at the end of the day and there's a bunch of things that happened that made you weigh more than you normally do. Well, you can take those things and you can look at it and you may have done everything you were supposed to do, right? You hit your macros every day. You got all your exercise in. You did everything you were supposed to do. You jump on the scale and you see you gained four pounds. Well, that's really demotivating, right? Like that would make you feel like crap. And that's why people would, would look at something like this and go, well, what the heck, what's the point? What's, why am I doing this? Why am I putting forth all this effort if I'm just going to gain weight? It doesn't make any sense. Well, if you were doing the weekly average, you may have seen that you actually lost weight, but it's just not showing up because you're only looking at one snapshot in time every single week and that's just not a good way to look at things so you may have lost a pound and a half or two pounds on average week to week 
but if you only look at the singular days, it shows you gained weight. All right, so that's another reason why it can help create a better relationship with the scale, right? You see the fluctuations, you know they're to be expected. You don't get so caught up in them anymore. You know it's part of normal. You know every time you step on the scale, it's only one seventh of your weight. So you don't have to worry so much about what it looks like, right? We need to disassociate our, our happy and sad feelings with the scale. It's just a scale weight, all right? It, it should not control how you feel. It's just one part of the process. It's one tool in the tool belt. And you can see significant improvements without changes in body weight. Sometimes it'll even go up. And I've seen this before. I had one client who lost five inches off her waist before she saw a single pound drop off that scale. I mean, her pant sizes were dropping like crazy. And she was seeing all kinds of improvements in body composition, but it was not doing anything on the scale. Eventually, the scale weight started to catch up, right? So we can't get caught up on it, all right? I just wanted to really stress that. And hopefully, this new method that you are learning here can maybe help you. Now, again, everybody's unique. Everybody's different. Right. This works for a lot of people. It doesn't work for everybody. Some people, that scale just freaks them out too much. They cannot handle it. Every time they step on the scale, they completely freak out. Every time it jumps up a little bit and it just drives them insane, they can't do it. If that's you, that's fine. Don't do this. All right? Find other ways to look at things. I mean, we want to look at pictures and measurements and stuff anyway, but perhaps if it really messes you up with the scale, you just take it out completely and you're only looking at that at that point. Um, again, everyone's different. But uh, this is an option that works well for a lot of people. And I just want you to understand that scale weight fluctuations in the short term are not fat related. It's everything else. So hopefully that helps. Any questions, let me know. And I will talk to you later. I'm addicted to the love that you're giving. Every minute, every day I've been craving